الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وعظيمنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبا القاسم محمد بالقلوب ودوائها ونور الأفصال وضيائها وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المحصومين الصادقين Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. We continue from verse 17 of Surah 18 in the Quran, Surah Al Kahf. Having reached a stage where the youth want to depart from the town, where they are not able to openly engage in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, what we find is that they leave the town having been given leeway by the king of the town who told them, look, I'll give you a period to reconsider your opinions. I'm sure you'll come back towards me. They say, no, let's just leave now. And they leave without no one one seeing them. And they head off. When they head off on their way, it is narrated that they meet a shepherd and his dog. Now there's a difference of opinion as to whether the shepherd joins them or not. But what one finds is that the shepherd asks them, Where are you going? They are saying we are going towards a land where we are able to worship the oneness of God. And alongside him is the dog. And what they find is that it is narrated that he states he wants to join them. And also it's narrated that the dog wants to be with them on the journey. In one of the narrations it states that they allow the shepherd to join them but not the dog. There is a difference of opinion on this area but that they allow the shepherd to join them, but not the dog. And then it's narrated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to the dog to speak to the companions of the cave. And say, O companions of the cave, my Lord has ordered me to remain loyal to you. Now some people will say, how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal to the animal kingdom to be able to speak towards a human being? You find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, has the ability to make anything be able to speak and number two because this dog has a particular role within the story it's not just that the dog joins them some people may ask but that's najasat having a dog alongside you we in the religion of islam we state that a dog according to the hadith of our prophets is man's best friend in terms of loyalty there is no animal as loyal as a dog that's why you find when a blind person walks across the road the dog is guiding him It's as if the dog has this sense of communication with its owner. We of course say, yes, there is najasat on the dog, and therefore a person can't keep the dog within the house. But in terms of, for example, having him as a security in the front of the house, of course, not jumping about and playing with him after he's just seen him go near the tree. But other than that, as long as you come and have this dog as security for you, there isn't a problem because there is a loyalty there established between the dog and the Master, as we find here, there is a dog whose role is to be loyal towards the companions of the cave on this journey. When these companions of the cave come, they come towards the cave and they enter this cave with the idea that they're going to sleep here for a part of a day, okay, or so, in order that they are able to remain away from the gods of Deikanus. And what we find is that he actually is narrated to have sent a number of exhibitions, exhibitions, sorry, to go and find them. In turn, they say that for nine years, he has sent people to go and search for the companions of the cave. Nine times, in nine years, he sends people to look for them. Where have they gone? And what we find here is that the Quran says, in verse number 17, that these people, Allah mentions to you how they were able to remain alive. Because it's not an easy thought that you remain alive within a cave. For over 300 years, what was the role of the dog? Where were they in the cave? How were they able to remain alive? Let's see what the Quran says. Sunlight used to enter the cave from the right. And, the, and at sun, uh, from the right at sunrise, and from the left at sunset. What you would find is that the heat from the sun would make them, would make them change sides while they are in their sleep. 
the way the heat was coming on their body, they would automatically change sides in their sleep, like in Dar es Salaam when their power isn't working. How many times do you have to change your side of sleep? To the extent I think I must have done 360 degrees on my bed, if the generator is not working. Here in the same way, it says the sunlight enters the cave from the right at sunrise and from the left at sunset. They were where? They were in a position. The entrance of the cave opens towards the north. And the cave being in the northern hemisphere of the earth, the sun cannot shine directly in the cave. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as He says, when the sunlight enters from the cave, the cave, it enters from the right at sunrise, from the left at sunset. And then the heat made them change sides and sleep. Why? Because it kept the blood flowing. The heat that comes towards the body keeps the blood flowing. And therefore there is movement and not decay. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us something even more beautiful. He says in verse 18, وَتَحْسَبُهُمْ أَيْقَاظًا وَهُمْ رُقُودٌ وَنُقَلِّبُهُمْ ذَاتَ الْيَمِينِ وَذَاتَ الشِّمَالِ وَكَلْبُهُمْ بَاسِطٌ ذِرَاعَيْهِ بِالْوَصِيدِ لَوْ اطَّلَعْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ لَوْ لَيْتَ مِنْهُمْ فِرَارًا وَلَمُلِئْتَ مِنْهُمْ رُعْبًا The beautiful thing was that when anyone would come to the cave and he would look, he would think that they are what? He would think that they are awake because their eyes were open. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed them to sleep in such a way where their eyes were open. Now you imagine you walk to a cave and you see people just staring at you. Would you go in and inquire about them? No. Especially if they're just staring at you without blinking. You would think that, I don't think these are the type of people we say salamu alaykum to. No, I think it's better we leave them in their cave. So these people are just staring like this. They're asleep. But Allah has allowed their eyes to be open while they are asleep. And then He says what? وَكَلْبُهُمْ بَاسِطٌ ذِرَاعَيْهِ بِالْوَصِيدِ their dog was stretched out at the entrance of the cave. In a way where you would think that the dog was awake as well. Imagine, you would think the dog stretched out at the cave is also looking at you. Now it's one thing if a human's eyes are open. What if the dog's eyes are open? Well, not only what if the dog's eyes are open. Imagine a dog just stares at you at the front of a cave. Would you go and enter against these people? No. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, ذَلِكَ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ مَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُحْتَدِي وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَنْ تَجْدَ لَهُ وَلِيَّ مُرْشِدًا These are the signs of Allah. Whoever comes towards Allah, he'll find Allah as a guardian to him. Who would have thought that these companions, imagine they've just gone into a cave to sleep for one night. Would you imagine they sleep for 309 years? Number two, who would have thought that Allah makes sure when you're sleeping, your eyes are open so no one comes in? Number three, who would have seen such a beautiful creator? who makes sure that sunlight enters in a way that the blood continues to flow in your body because if you remain static in the same position, your body can decay. But because sunlight makes you move one way and the other, their body could no way decay in this period. And so therefore the Qur'an continued in verse number 19. They woke up. After how long? 309 years. They woke up, they start each other, uh, asking each other the question. One of them said to the other, How long have we been asleep? We've been asleep for a day or a part of a day. 309 years you've been asleep. When you wake up day or part of a day, Brothers and sisters, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always reply with this answer? Look anywhere in the Quran when it speaks about the dead becoming alive, always the question is, Kem labistum? How long were you asleep? And always the reply is, Qalu labithna yawman aw ba'da yawm. We've been asleep for a day or a part of a day. Do you know why? Because in the day of judgment, when Allah asks us, How long have you been asleep? We reply, we've been asleep for a day or a part of a day. That's why in the Quran we find, we mentioned the story of Prophet Uzair a few days ago. Prophet Uzair in the Quran, in Surah 2, verse 258, 59, 60. He is a prophet of God 
who walks past the town. أو كالذي مر على قرية وهي خاوية على عروشها. There was the prophet who walked past the town. It had fallen on its roofs. قال أن يحيي هذه الله بعد موتها. How is Allah gonna bring it to life after its death? فأماته الله مئة عام ثم بعثه. Allah made him die for a hundred years. How many? A hundred. أصحاب الكاف. How many? 309 same thing قال كم لبثت how long have you been asleep قال لبثت يوما او بعض يوم i've been asleep for a day or a part of a day قال بل لبثت 100 عام فانظر الى طعامك وشرابك لم يتسنه you've been asleep for how long for 100 years look at what your food and your drink وَانظُرْ إِلَىٰ حِمَارِكْ However, look at your donkey. You see, he had some food and some drink with him. The food, grapes, and some ahadith it was said. The grapes were still in the same condition. So therefore, he's thinking, I've only been asleep for a day or two. But the donkey was completely decomposed, decayed. So what did he want to do? Allah said, now you want to see the dead become alive? Call your donkey with our permission, it will stand up. He calls the donkey straight away. With the permission of Allah, the donkey just stands up. He showed him, you thought you were asleep for a day or two. That's why the beauty of the day of judgment is what? The beauty of the day of judgment is that mankind thinks he's been asleep for how long? He's been asleep for a day or a part of a day. Yet when Allah raises him, he could have been asleep for thousands of years. It doesn't matter. On that day, if you've revised for your exam, you'll be successful. If you haven't revised for your exam, you'll be a failure. The beauty of the day of judgment is what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given you the exam paper before you come to the class. All he says is turn up with the answers. If you look in the Quran, how many times does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you, I'm going to tell you what you're going to say to me on the day of judgment. Don't come to me saying I never knew. Look at shaitan. Shaitan himself expresses what he's going to say, or Allah shows us what shaitan's going to say on where? On the Day of Judgment. What does Quran say? Quran says that shaitan says, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ Surah 14 verse 22. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقُ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ Those people who say shaitan makes me do haram. That's why I can't be religious. Shaitan says what? Shaitan comes forward and says, on the day of judgment, he says, Allah promised you a promise of truth. I promise things, I haven't kept my promise. Look how Allah is already showing you. Question number one, Shaitan. I haven't even got there, he's already showing me what Shaitan is going to say. Then he says what? وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي I had no power over you. I just invited you. You accepted my invitation. Shaitan, his words are beautiful, paradoxically. Shaitan doesn't make you do an act. He invites you to the act. He says, look, look, look how beautiful it is. But does he act it? Why? He's seen many before you who acted it in stupidity. He's going to say to you, look, you can act it. I invite you to it. He is say, here he says, I didn't have any power over you. I invited you, you accepted my invitation. فَلَا تَلُومُونِ وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not blame me, blame yourselves. How mankind always, whenever mankind sins, he looks to blame everyone else. But it's you, no dad, no mom, no best friend, no community. You had the choice. Shaitan says, don't blame me. Blame yourself. مَا أَنَا بِمُصْرِخَكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُصْرِخِينَ I am, cannot help you, nor can you help me. The beauty about Shaitan is that Shaitan worshipped God for 6,000 years or more. Some people have worshipped God for 10, 15 years, they think they become religious. Shaitan worshipped for 6,000 years or more. And he believed Allah created man 
and he believed Allah was the Lord of man. But the only thing he didn't believe in was that when Allah told him to obey everything, he said, I'll obey some of the things. Some people until today, you tell them pray, he prays. You tell them fast, they fast. You tell them come here and please make sure you learn knowledge. They come and learn knowledge. You tell them wear hijab. There I think Muhammad was mistaken. Muhammad was right in prayers, no doubt. I'll wear hijab in salah because my Lord sees me only five times a day. The rest of the day he can't see my hair. But in salah when he sees me five times a day, five minutes a day, so 25 minutes a day my Lord sees me. That's when I'll wear hijab. But the rest of the day there's no need for hijab. What's the need? Muhammad got everything right. But the hijab issue, he's not living with me. He doesn't know what I face. What's the difference between that and shaitan? Shaitan simply said, after 6,000 years of salah, what, you prayed for three years, you become religious? 6,000 years of salah, 6,000. And the one thing he said wrong was what? Was the arrogance he had over a law of God. So if I don't wear hijab, for example, what's the difference when I say, A'udhu Billah min shaitan rajim what am I? It's not that we want to come and condescend people, no. Sometimes you just have to open people's wavelengths. Why do I say A'udhu Billah min shaitan Because he questioned Allah's law. Do sujood to Adam? No. I'll do everything else. I'll even pray more than everyone. But that area, you got it wrong. Subhanallah, look in the communities around the world. There are some jama'ats, they beg a belief. There's less hijab in the community. And then you will see in other non-Muslim non communities. And ladies flock into the mosques, not only with the least hijab, but also the hijab of the clothing. Let's just say there's no hijab on the head. But even the hijab of the clothing has become something which has become too tight to wear into a mosque. And so what do we find? We find that when the Muslims come and say, A'udhu Billah min ash-shaytan rajim What, 6,000 years you worshipped Allah? Even if you don't follow shaitan, know he worshipped for 6,000 years. He made one disobedience. Look what happened. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows you. And so Ashab al-Kahf came forward. They thought they'd been asleep for a part of the day. قَالُوا رَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا لَبِثْتُمْ Allah knows how long we've been there. فَبْعَثُوا أَحَدَكُمْ بِوَارِقِكُمْ هَذِهِ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَيُّهَا أَزْكَى طَعَامًا فَلْيَأْتِكُمْ بِرِزْقٍ مِنْهِ They're hungry. If I've been asleep for a day, I'm hungry. And therefore I want one of us to go and get some food. How old is my notes? The notes I used today in Dar es Salaam 2006. Will they be the same notes in 2306? But I think they will be because I've just been asleep for one day. So I take the notes with me. And I go towards market. The beautiful thing about these youths is what? They say, فَلْيَنظُرْ أَيُّهَا أَزْكَى طَعَامًا When you go to look for food, make sure it's halal where you're getting it from. Quran didn't just say, <coughs> look for the food. They said to each other, فَلْيَنظُرْ أَيُّهَا أَزْكَى طَعَامًا When you look for food in the town, make sure the food is from people who believe in God. Why? Because I mentioned in my first majlis, food has a moral, a spiritual and a physical effect. The pig, pork, why can't we eat pork? Spiritual and physical effect. Physical effect, dysentery, trichinosis, all of these are diseases. Because of the worms, when the, when the pig eats its own feces, the worms which come and break the stomach and these are the causes of diarrhea. But the spiritual aspect is what? Is that every piece of food you eat has an effect on you, on your soul and your body. 
The pig is the only animal which likes seeing other animals go with its wife or with its partner. It sits and it watches other animals come near its partner without doing anything. Does the lion do that? The lion, you go near a lioness. Does the human? Well, if the human eats pork and bacon day and night, Europe reached a stage in Amsterdam where everything became halal. Yes, sleep with her in front of me, I want to see. You could go on the newspapers of the world, they'll tell you many stories of these clubs where people go and indulge in these activities. The idea was that Islam brought in a whole reform. A whole reform of what? A whole reform of the eating habits of Arabia. Arabians used to have major problems in their eating habits. Both the way they kill and what they eat. If you look at Surah 5 verse number 3, you'll find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you what's halal and what's haram to eat. And He says, حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ الْمَيْتَةُ وَالْدَّمُ وَلَحْمُ الْخَنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُهِلَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ بِهِ وَالْمُنْخَنِقَةُ وَالْمَوْقُوضَةُ وَالْمُتَرَدِّيَةُ وَالْنَطِيحَةُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here gives you eight disciplines as to where Arabia went wrong but where Islam should go right. Number one, haram for you is to eat that which you find dead. Why? Because it causes diseases, infections within the human being. And the spiritual effect is it causes madness. If I just find something dead on the ground and I eat it, it can cause madness in the human being. What dem, dem, physical effect, I cannot eat blood. I see some people going, a bit of blood comes out, he's already sucking it. Who allows you to suck? Which religion? Which religion? I don't care if it's this much blood, it's haram. You can't suck your blood. Why? Physical effect, dryness of the throat. Spiritual effect cuts the generations of the human being. Lahmul <coughs> Khanzir, we showed the physical and spiritual. Wama uhilla li ghayrillah bihi. Do you know what wama uhilla li ghayrillah bihi means? When you slaughter an animal, the Arabians used to slaughter for the idols. Give it to the idol, leave it near the idol so the idol blesses. Quran and Islam came and said what? <coughs> Before you slaughter the animal, you make him face Qibla. <coughs> and the first slaughter is for whom? You say Bismillah. There's a particular direction. Wal-munkhaniqatu. <coughs> Munkhaniqatu means what? Means an animal which you get, you strangle the animal to death. Strangle it. Islam said what? You don't strangle an animal. Particular area where you come and you slaughter the animal. وَالْمُتَرَدِّيَةُ وَالنَّطِيحَةُ وَمَا أَكَلَ السُّوءَ وَالْمُتَرَدِّيَةُ وَالْمَوْقُوذَةُ Sorry. وَالْمَوْقُوذَةُ is what an animal which is thrown from the top of a building. Or sorry, an animal which is beaten to death. المُتَرَدِّيَةُ is what? المُتَرَدِّيَةُ is the animal which is thrown from the top of a building. Here therefore we find وَالنَّطِيحَةُ is when they would come and beat the animal. With different horns and tusks, they would beat the animal. <laughs> Arabians' eating habits had no discipline. Islam came. Islam said, with your eating habits, you come, there is a discipline. The animal faces qibla. You give a drink of water to the animal before the animal is slaughtered. You slaughter from a particular position. Why? So that the... Is it called uric acid? Uric acid or uric acid? Uric acid? Uric acid. Uric acid, if not sorted properly, everything remains within. <coughs> this is infectious acid. The pig <coughs> has no neck. It's a straight connection. With this uric acid, you will find 98% can remain within the body if it's not cut properly from the right veins. Islam came and bought a discipline. And that's why Ashab al Kahf came forward. And what did they say? They said to each other, when you go and look for food, look for halal food. Do you know in London, <coughs> when some people come from the Middle East, you see them eating McDonald's. Beef burger, hamburger, chicken burger. They come to Burger King. <coughs> What's it called? Whopper? Whopper. 
eating and eating and eating, all from the Middle East. Hijab full. <coughs> you ask him why. He says, it's halal where I come from. Sorry, which country are you in? Are you in Saudi Arabia? Are you in Kuwait? Are you in Jordan? <coughs> no, you're in London. Have you ever heard the word London? London is not Muslim country, my dear brother. Yes, no problem, even if it is a Muslim country. Then how? It says, you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the food gets blessed. <coughs> of course, we wish it was that easy. If it was that easy, we'll all be in Burger King every day, true? <coughs> well, the idea is what? Unfortunately, those people who fill their stomachs with haram, he knows he's eating haram. But sometimes the human being can go lower than the animal. <coughs> That's why, what do they say? They come forward and say, that look for food which is halal. Then they say, be careful however, because you're going into a town, we don't know the people, it's our first day here. إِنَّهُمْ يَظْهَرُوا عَلَيْكُمْ يَوْجُمُوكُمْ وَيُعِيدُوكُمْ فِي مِلَّتِهِمْ وَلَنْ تُفْلِحُوا إِذَنْ أَبَدًا Say to him, when you enter this town, be careful, because these people may stone you, because they're still thinking it's the old group. <coughs> When they went into the town, imagine you go into your town. 300 years after the town you lived in. <clears throat> Is your clothes going to be the same? I can only look back at the 70s and you find that when I look at my dad's pictures, him wearing flares and his shirt all open until here, I could tell that the, ch the style has changed. <clears throat> imagine 300 years later. This person walks into the town Everyone's thinking, I think this guy's lost his head. <clears throat> the way he's dressed. You know, sometimes the English have fancy dress party. <clears throat> and when you see the person dressed with the way where he's living 300 years back, you laugh at him when you see him in the street. But you'd never expect that this is the way he lives, true? <clears throat> so this person walks around, people are staring at him. What's going on? What's wrong with this guy? 300 years old, his clothes are. Not everyone stopped wearing that type of dress 300 years ago. He wants to buy some food. He says, no problem. He says, I'd like to buy some food. Okay, here you go. He gives him which coins? 300 year old coins. Today, in this world, if I've got a coin worth 300, uh, 300 years old, how much is it worth? A lot of money, true? He gives him the coin. The person says to him, are you joking with me? Giving me a coin 300 years old? The person from Ashab al kahf is thinking, what's this guy saying 300 years old? No one knows who's joking to who. <clears throat> Ashab al kahf person says, look, I've just come here for some food. Just give me some food. The person says, so why are you giving me a coin which is 300 years old? We stopped using that 300 years ago. Can you imagine how the person from Ashab al kahf is feeling? <clears throat> He's now thinking, things aren't adding up. Yesterday I was asleep. <clears throat> Today, look what's happened to me. <clears throat> and so what do we find? We find that the person says to him, please, please, tell me, who is ruling? He says to him, Theodosius II. He said, how about Deaconus? The person says to him, are you joking with me again? Deaconus died 300 years ago. <coughs> so he says to him, what's the situation now? And he says to him, look, come with me to the king. Let me introduce you to the king. Because if the king sees that you're a person 300 years old, <clears throat> and the person from Ashab al-Kahf says what? <clears throat> Excuse me. The person from Ashab al-Kahf, he comes forward and he says, he says, look, don't take me to the king because it's a difficult time for me. And this person of Ashab al-Kahf runs back towards his companions. Inshallah, tomorrow we'll see what he says to them when he sees them. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.